In this video, we're going to talk about uh, Ecology Lecture 10, which is... In this video, we're going to talk about Ecology Lecture 10, which are the biomes. Um, we first need to know what are biomes. Biomes are ways that we can categorize different areas of the planet, and what exactly uh, do we look at? We look at the, the biotic factors and the abiotic factors. The most important biotic factor that we look at are the temperature and the precipitation in a specific area. And then we also look at soil type, for example. But the temperature and the precipitation are the most important. We also look at biotic factors um, of all the plants and animals. So we'll quickly go over the different types of biomes, and we'll take a, take, take a look at the study questions for our test tomorrow. Um, first off, we have the marine biome. You should know that it provides the world's most food and oxygen because the marine biome is so large there are so many plants and animals, and so it produces a lot of food and, uh, and oxygen. And in Lecture 11, we talk about um, some more aspects of the marine biome. And the next one is our tropical rainforest. Again, you should focus on understanding the names. So when you look at a, the name of a biome, it should tell you a few things, right? So for example, the tropical rainforest is at a tropical place, so it's near the equator. Rainforest that tells you there's constantly a lot of rain uh, during during the year, and then tropical also tells you since it's near the equator, it has to be quite hot and it's hot all year long. It's common sense if you think about people living near the equator, right? Um, it's always really hot and rainy over there, and it's quite humid. What you need to notice over here is soil. Soil is not very rich because the organic matters are recycled and reused too quickly. So what does that actually mean? Um, we have a lot of plants and animals living in the tropical rainforest, but eventually they will die and the leaves on the trees would fall even if the tree doesn't die. And when the leaves fall and when the animals die, the nutrients, if you think about our nutrient cycle, the nutrients will be decomposed and the soil is supposed to get more rich, more nutrient rich. But that doesn't actually happen in the tropical rainforest reason for that is there are so many plants in that area that as soon as um, the leaves and the animals get decomposed, that nutrients get absorbed by other plants again right away. So that is why soil is not rich at the tropical rainforest. And then uh, for biodiversity, you should know that it's the greatest biodiversity on Earth. The next one is, oh wait, not yet. The next one is uh, epiphytes. So you should know that epiphytes are plants that live on trees. So if you think about the tropical rainforest, there are so many trees, so the competition for sunlight is really intense. And as a plant, you have to have sunlight in order to live. And in order to get more sunlight, epiphytes evolved into these plants that live on other trees so they can get closer to the sunlight, so they can do... Um, photosynthesis better and provide nutrients for itself. So epiphytes are actually not parasitic. They, they're on the plants to get more sunlight, but it's not really harming the plant that it's staying on, just using it as a, as a home. Um, what else do we need to know here? We need to know canopy are, um, prevent, they prevent rain from falling off, so that keeps the rainforest very humid. So, so far we've had tropical rainforest and the marine biome. Quick recap, what do you remember about that? Okay, moving on, the next one is the tropical dry forest. Again, this is, there are many characteristics about these biomes that's in the name, right? Tropical means it's hot all year long. Um, as you can see right here, the temperature is pretty stable and it's very, very warm. So 25, 30 degrees, that's about uh, 80, 90 degrees. And then dry forest, that tells you it's a forest, there are a lot of trees but is drier than the tropical rainforest. So let's take a look right here. We have um, a rich soil, first off, because um, even though it's a dry forest, there, there are still a lot of plants and animals, and um, the soil get rich and more rich than the tropical rainforest because there aren't that many plants. And then uh, here's a word called estivation, which is similar to hibernation, but instead of uh, animals sleeping through winter or really their just their body just body just kind of slows down um, during the winter but the animals can also go through the drier seasons right here um, in order to live 
The next one is the desert, and、um, you know what deserts are. The deserts are dry and it's really hot, but it's not hot all year long. As you can see right here, even though some of the deserts are close to the equator, there are also deserts that are、um, not exactly at the equator. So the the temperature actually fluctuates、um, during the year a little bit, and it also fluctuates a lot during the day. So at night it could get pretty cold, and during the day it's very warm. And the rainfall,、um, if you just think about the typical desert, right? Typical desert,、um, there's very little rainfall. Sorry, it's my hair. Keep on getting the place.、Um, so that's desert. And then the next one is、um, you should know what are some typical plants in the desert. If you just look right here, right? We have the cacti. We have some small bushes. So we don't have really tall trees because they won't be able to live there. All right. Next one is、uh, you can take a look right here. We have some shallow roots. We also have really deep roots. But the purpose of these roots is、um, to get water. So these shallow roots can collect water really easily, and the really deep roots can try to search for more water underneath、um, the ground. So desert. We have some animals that kind of are active during the day, or、oh, active during the night instead of during the day because it's too hot during the day sometimes. Next one is temperate grassland.、Um, if you are in the period that didn't have class today,、uh, make sure you look over this part and、uh, take some notes. Temperate grassland. Every time you see the word temperate, that should tell you that the instead of having really stable, instead of having really stable temperature, we have seasons. So temperate means there is a change in temperature. And the result of that is we have different seasons. So if you look at this picture right here, you can see that、um, this is pretty similar to what we have in the winter. Actually,、um, it's kind of cold in the winter and it's pretty pretty warm in the summer. And there's a decent amount of rainfall, but it's not not a whole lot. Well, actually, if you look right here, the parameters is less than a hundred millimeter、um, for most of the month. So it's, it's not a whole lot of water. Um, grassland, right? In this, in the name, there's a lot of grass.、Uh, there's very rich nutrients because of all that grass.、Uh, low rainfall, temperature varies.、Uh, animals or whatever animals that eat grass, grazing animals and some burying animals. The next one is temperate deciduous forest. Temperate again means we have different temperatures in the different months. We have distinct seasons.、Um, As you can see, we are living in the temperate deciduous forest、uh, in Maryland. And if you look at this picture, we have temperature varying, and we have、uh, precipitation of a certain amount. There's not a whole lot of precipitation、um, compared to some other areas of the world, but the temperature is definitely, you know, the the usual. It's pretty cold in the winter. It's pretty warm in the summer. And then. Uh, it, where can we find in northeast of North America, which is exactly where we live, and temperature temperature varies.、Uh, rainfall is not a whole lot, but we can have snow in the winter. The soil is pretty rich due to the decomposition of leaf litter. So if you look right outside right now, the leaves are falling, and that's our our nutrient cycle.、Um, all of those nutrients are being recycled for next year for other organisms. Temperate deciduous forest again.、Um, We have organisms that's your typical organisms: the squirrels, the deer's, fox, foxes. We don't see bears all that often、um, over this way.、I'm、happy that I've never seen one.、Um, and there's vertical stratification of plants and animals. You don't need to know this for the test tomorrow, but just just hear me out. <laughs> Knowing one more thing is it's, it's not a bad thing. So vertical vertical stratification. It's just、um, the distribution of different organisms vertically. So if you think about a tall tree, right? We have different organisms living at different parts of the tree. And then we have two more conifer forest. It's in the name cones. Conifer forest、uh, produce cones. What cones? Pine cones. What trees? Pine trees. So where do you find these pine trees? Is up in near the north, and it's very cold there. So if you look at the temperature right here, it goes to Negative twenty Celsius. I'm pretty sure I've never been. I don't know if I've ever been anywhere that cold, but it's quite chilly. And in the summer, it's not even that warm. It's about 
15 degrees Celsius, Celsius, which is about 60, 50, 60 degree um, Fahrenheit. Um, it's not great. And but at this place, we could have some snow. The precipitation is not a whole lot, so let's take a look. Oh wait, um, really depends on where you are. The precipitation could vary a little bit, so don't worry about that one too much. Temperature is definitely very cold and very long winters and very short summer and heavy snowfall um, in the winter. There's pretty good uh, biodiversity compared to the tundra, but if you think about the, the other places, the temperate grassland, the temperate uh, deciduous forest, the, um, the tropical rainforest, tropical dry forest, those areas has much better di biodiversity because it's not as cold, it's not as challenging of an environment for a lot of um, organisms. But in this area, um, eh, we still have a good amount of organisms, especially compared to tundra. So now, oh wait, not yet. So con conifer forest, if you just want to look at this page real quick, um, your typical, you know, Canadian, <laughs> Canadian uh, animals. The next one is tundra. Tundra is too cold for me for sure. Tundra has very little precipitation um, and is extremely cold. So if you look right here, it gets up to or down to negative 30 degrees Celsius. And even at its warmest time of the year, it's only one or two degrees above, um, above freezing. So that means we have this big word, permafrost. Here is permafrost. So permafrost um, describes tundra because permafrost is permanently frozen soil. Subsoil means it's, it's not the top, very top layer. It's a, it's a little bit underneath the top layer. That soil is always frozen because it's too cold. It never gets defrosted enough um, to be defrosted. The temperature is really cold. Biodiversity is very low because it's too cold, and uh, you can find them way up in the north. And there's not a whole lot of rainfall, but there is a de very decent amount of snow on the ground because that snow never really gets melted. So now that we talk about all these biomes, let's take a look again at our wonderful review sheet. So now can you answer all these questions? Let's take a look. Um, specifically, we could take a look at this one right here. The most annual precipitation, definitely tropical rainforest is in the name. Least annual precipitation, that's definitely the desert. Nutrient-rich soil, mm, that could be the tropical dry forest has nutrient-rich soil. The temperate grassland has, trop, uh, has rich soil. The um, temperate, temperate deciduous forest, uh, which is the area that we're in has rich soil. Nutrient poor soil, so definitely the tropical rainforest has nutrient poor soil because the nutrients get recycled too fast. Um, the desert is definitely nutrient poor, and the tundra is probably also nutrient poor for the most part. Warm all year long, that's your, your tropical stuff. So tropical rainforest and tropical dry forest has long winter, long winter, and sure summer. That's definitely the, uh, the coniferous, uh, the conifer forest, and or coniferous forest and tundra. Next one, um, these we just talked about. Where is the world's, world's most food and oxygen produced? That is your marine biome. What are epiphytes? Those are the little plants that live on other plants in order to get more sunlight. And how does it affect the tree it lives on? It doesn't really affect the trees for the most part. Which biome can it be found? It can be found in the tropical rainforest because there is too much competition for sunlight. And one more added on question, is it, oh, is it parasitic? You know the answer. The answer is no. What is permafrost? That is the subsoil, the little layer, well, underneath the little top layer of soil, you have all of the, the subsoil. Um, the subsoil is permanently frozen. It's in the name permafrost. And where can you find the permafrost? That will be tundra. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope you'll do well on this portion of the test tomorrow.